Learn why a 17-year-old Mormon girl buys a cross next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really pleased today to introduce you to Stacy Evans, who has been willing to come and share her story. We've worked at trying to get you here for a long time. Yes. <laughs> but it's certainly going to be worth it. I, I kind of, we've kind of discussed your story a little bit, and it's just, uh, it's just so fascinating. So tell me about your background just a little bit. Where, you, where were you born, and where are you from? I was born in Utah, um, grew up mostly in Manti. Really? Um, down there in San Pete yeah, County? Down in That's San where Pete. I'm from. Oh, really? I didn't born know Born in that. Gunnison. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so grew up in Manti, and it's a little tiny town. And yeah. Okay. And that's where you were. Did you live there until you were older? Uh -huh. yeah. And Yep. I lived there until I went off to college. Oh, really? So high school and everything, yep. huh? And were your folks members of the church? Yes. Yeah. Okay. My um, dad was a convert and went on a mission. And then when he got back, he and my mom got married in the Manti Temple. And okay started their family. Yeah. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two sisters and one brother. Okay. And so you uh, where you go off to college and, well, I guess before that, you're uh, baptized at age eight and yep. all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and, and yes. primary. And oh, yes. All the stuff. And young women's, I guess. Yes. And yeah. take seminary. I did. did I, I, took, I took just my freshman year um, and then I stopped just so I could it wasn't released it was release time so during the day um, so you had other so I had other other yeah I wanted to try to finish early so yeah. okay and I guess at that young age any questions or any problems in your life that you kind of think back on now maybe planted seeds of or any questions you had I guess uh, not really I just I think I kind of just relied on my parents, uh, you know, what they would tell me and just assumed everything yeah. was, that they said was, you know, was that true. That Joseph Smith was a prophet. And, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and they thing. were just going off of what they had been told. So, Isn't that interesting? We do have a tendency to do that, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the Book of Mormon, I guess, did you read that in... You know, I, I they always have the little read the Book of Mormon in a year, and you mark off each right, thing. Right. And I'd usually get to you know maybe three or four chapters into First Nephi, and then <laughs> that was it. <laughs> usually Isaiah in Second Nephi that stopped a lot of people. Yeah, you know, they had those long sections of Isaiah. But you basically felt like the church was true. There was nothing oh, to, yeah. to think to make you think differently. No. Nope. Yeah. So you go off to college, and what happens in life? Um, I just as I got older, I tried, I guess, kind of distancing myself from from church, just because I always felt that everyone that went had this just this high standard that they were upheld to, and I didn't feel that I ever met that standard. And so, instead of uh, I just I just couldn't put on the the facade that I I was. I was that way. Yeah. So. Do you think that's a common thing among young people, particularly that they're they know they they watch their parents and the other n neighbors and just assume they're all perfect people and. I th I think so. so yeah. yeah. It, it's it's like nobody's. We all you know say oh we're imperfect, but it's not really encouraged to ad admit, admit it. it. <laughs> yeah. So. Even though we. Yeah. yeah, you kind of make it as a general statement, but yeah. as far as personal things, you just don't really yeah. ad admit to anything like that. And you even felt that way going for, like, baptisms for the dead and mm -hmm. and getting your patriarchal blessing. You felt... Yeah, like, I never you know, got my patriarchal blessing because I felt like I didn't quite ever meet the worthiness standard. And if I did it slightly unworthy, then I wouldn't have as great of a blessing or the... <laughs> patriarch wouldn't um, have the full inspiration that he needed so Jeez. I just kept postponing and postponing and never, en ended, never up ended up doing it. So. it huh? Oh my goodness. Yeah. 
So do you go off to college? Do you take institute at college? No, or? no. Okay. By that time, I, I was pretty much inactive. I would go uh, for baby blessings or, you know, if a, a family member was speaking or some special, yeah. special thing, I would go. But What did your folks think of that? Did they... Uh, yeah. I'm sure it was disappointing to them, yeah. um, but they, I mean, they just, they didn't put a big guilt trip on me or anything like yeah. that. Well, so I posed the question at the beginning about the cross at age 17. What, tell us that story. Yeah, so I, you know, I always kind of felt like I never lived the standard. I couldn't ever be, you know, read my scriptures every day and pray every single day and you know, never use a cuss word or, you know, every, everything perfect. And I just always felt like God was unhappy with me or just, you know, that I wasn't quite, I wasn't quite loved because I hadn't quite earned it. Mm. Um, but, you know, seeing other Christians and how they, they had, you know, the cross and, and, you know, always talked about Jesus and, um, I thought, well, you know, Jesus loves them and they feel his love. Maybe it's possible he, he could love me and um, oh my goodness. just decided to buy the cross. It, it felt like, like a symbol of Jesus' love, not, you know, a, a death instrument or anything. And Yeah, and that maybe he could love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's so tender <laughs> because here you're trying to, I mean, we all want to be good and right. do what's right but if we're feeling guilty over our and we're all sin that's the other thing like you say mormons think they're well we're not perfect but they, right. they're not willing to admit they're sinners so after after that what happens in life um just you know continue being inactive and um things Life moves on, and um, I had my daughter, and I started thinking about uh, possibly going back to the LDS church, you know, like being... Um, to give her some... Word? Yeah, just, I thought, you know, she needs to have some sort of a, a bringing, upbringing and a background, um, but I didn't own a dress at the time, and I thought, well, I need to buy a dress, and then maybe I can start going to the ward, and my next-door neighbor had, you know, offered to let me go with her, and... Um, anyway, it never worked out that I, <laughs> that I ended up going, so. Now, you do get invited to a, a Christian church. I did, I had did. Had you been going to any Christian churches um, before? I, I had went to this particular Christian church maybe three or four times before, just on Sundays. Um, what brought you something. there? I guess my, my um, in-laws at the time went there and oh, okay. they had you know invited us on occasion to go and so yeah. um the one the one particular night i guess evening uh you know there's something going on at our church why don't you come out and just you know see what it is it'll give you a chance to get out of the house and they have you know things for your daughter to do and just come come you know just get out of the house tonight okay so I show up there, and there's this gray, curly-haired man that starts speaking, um, talking about how he and his wife converted to the LDS Church, and she was a BYU professor, and how their <laughs> kids served missions. And I thought, well, why is this Mormon guy at <laughs> Center Point Church, and what is he doing here? So my, I, he had my full attention. And what did your friends think? They didn't know either exactly, um, did so they? they? Yeah, they. Or they were worried about you. They knew uh, after the fact when we were already there. Um, they were familiar with Michael Wilder and their family, oh. and um, they realized what they had invited me to, and they were kind of. A little nervous. Oh, yeah, a little nervous, <laughs> a little, yeah, worried yeah. Um, that, you know, it would offend me or something, but sure. it turned but, out to be a good thing. What did you hear? Um, I just remember him putting this PowerPoint presentation up with different scriptures, and they were, you know, scriptures I'd never heard before, and I, I didn't come prepared with a notebook or pencil or anything like that, but 
I remember the first one that hit my mind was um, 1 Corinthians 1.18 that says the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but to those being saved, it's the power of God. And <laughs> it was like, I kind of made sense all of a sudden of um, why the cross was never embraced in the LDS church. And I just um, thought back to the time that I purchased the cross. Um, <laughs> as a teenager and it's, you know, and, and, and it was, it was like an embarrassment to wear it because, you know, the first time I put it on, my dad gave me a look, you know, that, <laughs> and asked where I got it. And it was, you know, obviously not approved. And so I, you know, I took the necklace off and put it away. And, and after hearing that verse, it just, something in my mind just clicked <laughs> and it was like, you know, it made sense. And, and then uh, the other one I remember him putting up was Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And I thought, well, you know, if we're, if we're saved by God's grace, just because of our faith, um, not anything that we do, if it's that simple, why are, why have we never been told this before? You know, there it is in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, there it is. If it's that simple, why haven't they shared it with us? And yeah. why have I never been told this? And it just made me think, well, what else is in my Bible that I've been missing out on that I haven't, haven't uh, read. And well, so that kind of, that, well, yeah, that started my, my journey out of Mormonism and, and into the arms of Jesus. Well, what did you actually start doing? By the way, if for everybody that's watching, this is the cross that you bought it, it, it at is. age 17, it is, isn't yeah. it? That's so yeah. special. So what did you actually start doing? Did you do some studying? Did you? Oh did yeah. You, um, I started with the with the New Testament, um, just going through, and it was like, you know, here's this this story and this picture of of Jesus, and um, it's like he was so much more than than I'd ever, you know, heard of him being, or you know, taught that he was, and it's isn't that amazing? It's like he all of a sudden, it's like Jesus was all I ever he actually was, well, I all I ever wanted him to be, and more. Yeah. In Mormonism, he's just our elder brother, mm -hmm. and he's actually working his way to godhood yeah. and had to come to earth and get baptized and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's just amazing what... Uh, and so you started studying the Bible a little. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and it, it was kind of instantaneous. I, you know, within three weeks, I had written my resignation letter and, and oh sent that in. And, um you know, I started going every Sunday to the you know local Christian church, and um, I remember just everyone getting up and the worship time was. It, I mean, it was so different than what I was used yeah. to in Mormonism, but um, I didn't know any of the music, and so I would pay such close attention to the lyrics on the screen. Um, Don't you just just because I didn't know the yeah, yeah the music, and so it's like these words would just hit me, and then. As I, you know, was more familiar with my Bible, I started realizing that the lyrics in Christian music oftentimes are straight, straight from the from, Bible. Right. So, and I started listening to Caleb all the time, thinking that would help me be able to sing along at church and be familiar with the songs. And um, as I listened, you know, to try to learn this, the music. And then one day I try to go back to, you know, my old pop music station and it was three or four minutes into listening and it just wasn't doing anything for me and went <laughs> back fun. back to the Christian music and now you had an experience with a song particular song that came along so. yeah it was right before I mailed off my resignation letter and it's like I I knew that um I knew I couldn't just kind of go about I just couldn't continue being inactive. I I felt like I I had to make it known that I didn't I guess believe in Mormonism anymore instead of just, you know, people assuming that I was and so I thought, well, I'm going to have to tell my family about this obviously and which was very scary at the time and I thought I remember thinking at the time, surely I'm the only person in Utah to ever leave the church, <laughs> which Isn't come to find out feeling? later, absolutely not the case. But 
feel like you're all alone out there mm -hmm. coming up with this information. And I think what's fascinating is that you're drawn uh, drawn out basically because of Jesus and the Bible. Yeah. You, did you know a lot of what I call the bad news, all the negative kind no, of No, I didn't. Stuff? I actually didn't know any of that until after the fact, you know, and, and watching watching your show on Thursday nights, it was like I'd start hearing these things and, and look into it and it's like, oh, you know, so I did, you know, learn the, the negative stuff as time went on, but, but it was really I, Jesus. Yeah, I feel it. like, you know, and a lot of people, it's the negative first, you know, that right. comes, but for me, it was, it was like Jesus's love yeah. is what got a hold of me and, and made the difference. And it's so, it's, it's a miracle to me it, that, uh, and, and how God reaches out to each one of us probably in, in the way that he needs to. Yeah. And touched you with the cross story and yeah. the scripture. Interesting that Michael would bring that one up and yeah. Michael Wilder. Now you since, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I, like I said, I didn't have a paper or pencil that night to write it down. I just kept saying it over in my mind, First Corinthians one eighteen, because I wanted to read it for go myself home. and look it up and see, you know, just really be able to see if that's really what it said. And and so the, and then the two, Ephesians two eight and nine. I just remember going over and trying to remember those in my mind. I didn't have anything to write them down with. Fascinating. Now you mentioned telling your family. Was that difficult, or did they? It did was. They... Um, I wasn't sure how they would react, or yeah, you know, anything you hear. I heard, you know, how some people had been disowned, and it, it went really negatively for them. Um, thankfully, it didn't. It didn't go that way for me. Um, obviously, my. Most of my family members were less than thrilled, but we maintain a relationship oh, and great. respect for each other. So oh, that's nice. And your uh, dad loves you still. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Well, um, I, you had such so many different things that I thought were interesting about you. you were commenting about the Bible, reading twenty twenty. What what does that mean to you? Oh yes, I had a friend uh, also who had left Mormonism that told me. She says one of the things that I you know learned was having twenty twenty vision. I says, well, what does that mean? She says when you read a verse or a passage, she says make sure you read twenty verses ahead and twenty verses after. That way you're getting what you're reading into context. In context. So yeah. that's something I, that stuck with me. And another one was um, that you often read different versions. Do you still read the King James at times? But Not so much. Um, yeah. I, but you read different versions just to help clarify. Yeah, if, there's, if I'm going along reading and something's kind of, you know, not making sense or I think well, having some questions about it, I'll just, you know, it's so easy to go online or pull out the app and, and read it and you know, three or four or five different versions and yeah. just be able to get a clear picture of what's being said. You also mentioned that you have gone to a place, and I don't know if you did this initially, but a place called gotquestions.org. Yes. What, yes. what is that website? And um, I just, that. I would have a question about something and wonder, oh, is this, was this Mormon doctrine or is this, is this oh. biblical? And so I would go to Google and type it in and um, I found that one of one of the sources that seemed to be consistent and reliable was the gotquestions.org. Mm. And just, you know, it would give an answer and then a biblical reference as to why. And so then you can look the verses up and yourself and read it. And and stuff, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also going to ask, I know that uh, we ended up meeting also at a wilder convention or a convention, but a presentation yeah. At some point, have you, have you met them now and then? Did you introduce yourself? And yep, ever yeah. Ever tell Michael what, what your, his story meant um, to you? Michael came alone the night that I uh, heard him speak. I think something was going on with Lynn's father at the time, so she wasn't able to join him, so it was just Michael. Um, but after the fact, I contacted Lynn and just kind of told her, you know, that I had heard him speak. And, um, I'll bet she was thrilled. She put me in contact with some people in my community that were also former Mormons and just kind of a support group. Yeah, because here you were thinking you were all alone, yeah. the only one to ever do this. Yep. <laughs> what kind of things have you learned about uh, Christians that you didn't know was as a Mormon? Um, Anything particular that... Just, just the love of Jesus. It's just Jesus is the central focus. It's not um, it's not families, it's not temples, it's not prophets, yeah. it's not 
you know, it's not a you know extra books to read and study. It's not a list of works that need to be done. It's it's all about Jesus and and what He's done. So. Hmm. Well, I, I just think it's fascinating, and I'm so grateful that the, the Wilders, I guess, they go on tour every summer, and I think they're on tour right now as we're doing this yeah. interview, but I think they eventually get here to, to Utah, which we invite people to look them up. Yeah. I think it's called adamsroadband.com or .org. Something like, yeah, yeah. Adams Road. <laughs> but they were missionaries that uh, came to know Jesus and yeah. started reading the Bible, and just like uh, uh, you, particularly, that uh, you started feeling the love of Jesus, and, and that brought you out. Yep. Well, gosh, uh, would you do anything differently, the, the way you've approached your family, for example? Uh, um, not necessarily. I just... I mean, it is hard for them to hear that that we've, or that you've come to a different perspective of things yeah, and it's it's hard um knowing that they probably view me as you know the one that's misguided and has been misled and off track and yeah so th and that that's hard because i know that you know it's probably painful for them because they think that it's not a good thing when it is a good thing and isn't it so hard to share i mean i know you mentioned earlier that it, you wanted to share as soon as you learned this stuff mm -hmm. you were trying to share the information and you want to do that and yet you cannot tell all of a sudden that they don't want to yeah yeah know it's like they're kind of interested at first and then as soon as you know they kind of see where you're going with it it's just it's kind of just they shut down and why do you think that is do you think they don't, they're so confident where they're at or they're not so sure where they're at? I sometimes wonder I think it's, if, it's maybe they're not so sure where they're at. Um, I, I don't know. I've, I've kind yeah. of toyed with that because I, I think my knowledge, and it sounds like yours too, and a lot of others that we've interviewed, the knowledge is very shallow uh, um, as far as what certainly the the bad news again, but even the good news and the Bible and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, when they find out you know just a little bit more than they do, than especially a priesthood holder usually, right. they get a little nervous about, I think, I, I don't know, I have to think about that some more, yeah. but yeah. Well, anything you'd like to say to your family, friends, or those that you care about? Um, just that I, I love them and I pray for them and there's just so much joy and happiness that um, can be found when you are willing to leave a religion and and you know traditions and things and just seek a relationship with with Jesus instead. Yeah, you also mentioned uh, earlier about being your own savior. Do you remember saying that? What yes. does that mean exactly? Yeah, to you? it's it's like. Um, as a Mormon, I felt like I had to be my own savior. It was all on me to to check all the boxes and and live the the standard of worthiness and and whatever I couldn't do, you know, then Jesus would make up the difference. But basically, it was it was me first. Um, basically, being your own savior, it's it's on you to yeah. to do. And we just don't uh, give him. You know, he said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And don't you feel a sense of freedom and liberty now that you didn't feel before? Yeah, definitely. The guilt of uh, doing baptisms for the dead, not feeling worthy to get a patriarchal blessing and all those things. Those, yeah. Yeah. And there's such a freedom and liberty in Jesus. Yeah. Stacy, thank you so much for sharing your story and uh, any last minute words or thoughts um, I'm going to give you a second just, there, but. just one thing I remember thinking was um, when I heard Ephesians 2 8 and 9 and how you know if it's that if it's that simple why you know why haven't I heard this before and <laughs> yeah and the more I kind of thought about that that question you know why why I haven't heard this before I thought well you know God's not willing that any should perish so why wouldn't he make it as simple as possible and as, I guess, easy as possible? And 
it doesn't take a whole a whole bunch of knowledge and and um, understanding of you know extra revelation and all these different things it's just you know if believe in Jesus and confess that he's your savior and rely on him and and that's and beautiful that's that's it that's it and that's what the Bible says believe in me and have everlasting life yep. thanks Stacy appreciate it and thanks for joining us here on the ex-mormon files see you next time